Can you believe it is almost 2020? Right now it is December 2019 and we're about to go into a brand new decade. In celebration of this new decade that we're about to see, I wanted to share some of my thoughts on the most interesting design tools to watch out for in 2020. We've seen the whole sweep of Figma, of Sketch, of Framer, a lot of prototyping tools in the past couple of years, Creative Cloud still going strong, but I've noticed a lot of smaller startup style design tools popping up in the design communities and industry. So let's go and take a look at some of the hot new tools to watch out for in 2020. Let's jump straight into it by looking at drawing tools. The first drawing tool is Phase. Now there is a beta list for Phase, but you can sign up and join the list and they'll invite you in over time. So custom code is great, but it can slow us down a lot in the creative process. And so Phase lets you quickly export your designs into full on code. And this includes things like interactions, micro interactions, transitions, the whole nine yards. This means you can create not just prototypes, but also working products. And you can export your code into any language of your choice, which seems pretty useful. It looks like they have a good mix of features like libraries, components, adaptive layout, real data, version control, and real-time collaboration. Now there's currently no information about pricing. I assume that it's free to use for now while they're in beta, but I'm interested to see how they're going to price it in the future. And because of the lack of info on pricing, I'm also not sure who this is for. Is it for teams? Is it for individual solo designers? There's no info on whether it's browser based or desktop based. So I have a few questions around whether it's a collaborative tool or not and whether it's meant for teams or just the solo designer. In summary, this seems like a really promising tool, but I do think it's a little bit early days. There's a few unanswered questions and I think the premise around exporting real working code to create actual products is really, really cool. But I do have a lot of questions around what this means for the designer engineer relationship, whether the code that they export is actually usable for real products or not, and what that actually really looks like in detail. So keep an eye on it. I'm curious to see what the answers to some of those questions are. Next is shift.studio. And again, they have a beta and you have to sign up to the waiting list. I'm not going to lie. When I initially looked at their website, I got a little bit freaked out by all the screenshots of code. There's a lot of mentions of react and live data. So it seems like maybe there's a bit of a steep learning curve or a little bit of heavy lifting to get into the tool. I was really excited to see that they had a link here to their roadmap and I was like, finally a company with some transparency and we can see what they're actually working on and the features they're prioritizing. But disappointed that when I clicked on it, I got a 404. So I watched the intro video to get a bit of a better understanding of what this tool is about. And it looks like you can basically drag and drop from a code based component library to build your designs. So if I understand correctly, you're basically building designs and building screens with the actual working engineering components. And what I like about this is there is like obviously going to be really good consistency there between the assets that design is working with and that engineering is working with. It kind of gave me a bit of a web flow vibe where you kind of have this visual code editor that makes it easier for people like me who don't have all the sort of front end dev experience to basically use the power of code to build my designs. The benefit of this is you can push it to any backend like WordPress or Rails, or they have a lot of different places that you can push to, which is really cool. Something I really liked is that they have a component marketplace. So if you're somebody who likes to build out libraries or components, you can actually put these up on their marketplace for other designers to use. And this is the first time I've kind of seen a component or library based marketplace. So I think that that's really, really promising. And I'm excited to see that there's a tool that's actually putting some time investment into this. Again, no info on pricing. So I assume it's a closed free beta for now. Similar questions. Who's it for? Is it for teams? The solo designer? Really curious about that. So in summary, I think the screenshots of code and mentions of React on their website is a little daunting for someone like me who's more of a visual product designer and not as in the weeds with the code. But I could see that this might be a powerful tool for someone who's maybe a bit more of a hybrid. Potentially you are building, designing and building websites for clients. This could potentially be a good tool for you to try out. Next, let's look at modules. Now, if we take a look at their website, they claim they are the visual code editor. Design, develop, document and deploy your design system without writing code. 
that's kind of interesting, right? But as we scroll down, I start to see screenshots of like code and the design tool side by side. So now I'm starting to get a little bit worried. Uh, their claim is that you don't have to write any code, but here all the code is in the screenshots. So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to write that code or if maybe the design tool is spitting out that code for me and is something that I can then use. But let's have a little bit more of a look. It looks like this tool is really focused on design systems. So trying to reduce that bottleneck between platform design teams and then the in-house designers that are actually using the design system and using the component library. And I really like that there's a tool that's starting to think about about this as sort of a competitive strategy or as a way to position their product. Design systems and component libraries are only becoming more and more popular and more in use. And so I think having a tool that's sort of gonna be dedicated to trying to solve the problems that come with having design systems is really, really good to see. Now, what I'm not sure is if this tool is a place to create and store the design system and then push it out to other tools like Figma or Sketch, or if, all of it's stored in here and you pretty much have to migrate your whole design team to using modules. I do like that it auto generates style guides for your design system. So I don't have to go in and do all the redlining and all the identifying of the components that I'm using for my engineers. It can basically spit out this whole style guide and I can share that with my engineers and they'll have all the info that they need. In summary, I think it's really, really exciting to see a design tool that's geared towards design systems. I think this is only gonna be more and more important and valuable as we start to see design teams scale and use systems more in their design process. The last drawing tool is Whimsical. Now this is like a visual workspace where you can create flows, mind maps, do lightweight wireframing, now, it doesn't have super high visual fidelity, but I think it gives you just the right amount of fidelity that you need to kind of visualize your designs or communicate your ideas. There's built-in elements and icon libraries so you can keep everything clean and clear and consistent. And you can also link things together with arrows that act really, really smart when you move around. I have wasted too much time as a designer manually drawing and vectorizing arrows, which can get really complex when you start having a large scale design. So this is really cool to see. Whimsical is a collaborative tool. You can share your visual workspace just by sending a share link and others can drop in and start contributing also, which makes it really good for like jams together, brainstorming sessions, uh, research synthesis and things like that. They have pricing, yay! First tool that actually communicates their pricing, which is $10 a month, which doesn't seem bad for a collaborative tool. In summary, I think Whimsical is a really easy, minimal, lightweight tool that just gets rid of all the fluff that will be really, really beneficial for teams. The next section I wanna look at is documentation. I know not as exciting as drawing tools, but still a really, really important part of the design process. I'm constantly having to document my work and my design thinking to communicate with my cross-functional partners. So I think it's important to consider this part of the design tool space for 2020. First up is Miro. Now Miro is a single online whiteboard. Think an infinite canvas and collaboration on steroids. They have instant sign up, so I managed to instantly get access, which is awesome. It's good to see that they have a lot of integrations. You can pull in a lot of things like media files, docs, flows, etc. Everything visually on one giant canvas. It's nice to see that they have inbuilt templates, so if I want to do a mind map or a wireframe or something, I can just instantly add it here. So I could see myself using this tool with my team for brainstorms or jam sessions where we're just focused on getting the ideas out and not really focused on like the visual presentation of those ideas. The fact that they have inbuilt templates makes it really, really easy that you can just straight away get started without worrying about how to present that information. You can also add things like sticky notes and leave comments for other team members. So it's nice that they're considering that part of the collaborative process also. In summary, I think this is a powerful tool for working team sessions. It actually reminds me a lot of Mural, which is another very, very similar tool. I like that the friction of setting up your board is kind of taken away by the inbuilt drag and drop templates. So it's really, really easy to just quickly get started and get going. I could definitely see myself using this tool with my team. Next up is Userbit app. And this is a tool that's really geared towards user research. They help you manage all the different parts of user research, like interviews, organizing notes, audio and video, highlighting needs and pain points, and also building your personas. So I'm often participating in user research as a designer, and it can be quite a big pain point to not have a dedicated 
central source of truth for research. Often our research material is scattered across different tools and different files and I have multiple tabs open trying to link everything together and it can be really really hard to synthesize research or even just use the research if it's not all tidy in one centralized place. They have instant sign up which is great so I signed up to have a little look around the tool. They provide you with a sample project and here you can invite team members, there's different areas for creating interview scripts and documenting responses, you can add notes and you can also analyze the notes to uncover opportunities, analytics and there's also other tools like personas and journey maps. What I really, really like is that you can create tags and you can use these tags throughout all your basically research collection so that later on you can use these tags to filter, see trends, pull out different insights related to those particular tags. This will save so much time than having to like manually go through all the notes and try and highlight and pull out the repeating themes. You can also use the tags to create graphs and other visuals which is also really helpful when it comes to creating your research reports. What's also really great to see is that you can create visual storyboards straight in the tool. We often do this analogly, is that even a word? Analog, in an analog setting where we basically write sticky notes and we visually create a journey map on a wall. But this can be really, really hard to then capture and digitize. So being able to like create these storyboards and these journey maps digitally in this tool would I think be a lot, lot easier for our researcher to kind of have all of this info pre-captured. It auto generates reports of all of your research findings and you can share this out to stakeholders or cross-functional partners. This is a really, really nice way of presenting the information and also having it accessible to other team members. Now I do have to upgrade my plan to have access to some of the more robust features, but it looks like it's only about $10 a month, which seems pretty affordable again for such a heavy lifting tool. In summary, I think it's really great to see a user research dedicated tool, rather than having to hack together other tools like Airtable, Mural, Google Docs, etc. Having everything in one centralized place makes it really easy to synthesize, you can auto generate the reports and share it out to everybody who needs access to it. Thumbs up, I'm actually gonna share this tool with my researcher when I get back to work because I think it's gonna be pretty, pretty helpful for us to have a tool like this. Next is Pitch, which on the surface looks like an ordinary Google Slides presentation kind of tool. It's an invite-only beta for now, and they claim that they help teams build better presentations collaboratively, effectively, and beautifully. I like that they have these values, so let's see what that actually means. It looks like they have some built-in custom templates, but what's really interesting to me is that it seems like you can manage an asset library. So maybe you're managing company templates so that you know all the presentations internally are consistent. It looks like Pitch lets you actually manage an asset library. So you know have all your brand guidelines, your colors, your fonts, your style, whatever, your theme, and you can manually uh, at a centralized point manage that library so that all the presentations internally are consistent. I'm impressed to see the level of funding that they have and also the people actually working on this product, uh, people who previously built Wonderlist, so I don't think this tool is going to go away quickly based on that. I'm not entirely sure of the exact pain point that this tool is solving. I mean it looks really beautiful and I'd probably prefer to use this over Google Slides just because of the visual presentation of this tool, but it doesn't really seem so far like there's any strong additional features or something like that other than the sort of manageable asset library. In summary, I think it's really good to see companies taking on the big fish like Google Slides, Keynote, PowerPoint. However, as a designer who likes to try and keep everything in one place, I will probably continue just making my presentations in Figma directly. However, if you are a presentation designer, maybe you are making presentations for clients, then I definitely think this tool is worth checking out. The last category is prototyping, yay! Let's start with Meet Alva. Meet Alva is open source, so you can download it and get started straight away. I watched the video and it seems a little bit unclear. It sounds like they want to bridge the gap between designer and engineer, but the video didn't really explain how they plan to do that. It looks like Alva lets you design interactive products based on components engineered by your developers. I opened up a demo file and it looks like it has components that are actual code blocks from engineering that I can use to build my own design, but I can't create my own. 
I can change the state of a component, like make a button enabled or disabled, primary, secondary. So I can only seem to work within the constraints of a component. I can't create my own or, or edit that if there's something that doesn't meet my needs. I can also add interactions and export those to HTML, which is really cool. I'm not really sure yet how I would use or incorporate Alva in my current design process, as I don't do much exporting to code, and I don't do that many interactions or prototypes either. It seems like it might be a lot of heavy lifting to get your engineers on board to provide you with those actual eng built components that you could then use to create prototypes. I like that they are trying to close the gap between design and engineering, but it seems like it's very prototyping focused and I don't know if there is such a gap to be closed there for prototyping when it comes to design and eng working together. I will agree that sometimes it is kind of frustrating when I'm using components built internally by our design platform team that don't necessarily match the components that engineering have in their library. But I think when you're at the prototyping stage, it's not as important that those be consistent. But it is nice to know, I guess, that the components I'm using are reliably what's available in the code base if I was to use this tool. Curious to see how they're going to clarify their positioning next year in 2020. So I'll probably be keeping an eye out on this tool, but currently I'm not in any kind of rush to bring this into my process. And we made it to the last tool, which is Drama App. Now they have a free seven day trial, so you can go ahead and sign up right now and get started using the tool. It's also awesome to see that they have free pricing for education. After we've gone through all of these tools, this is the first tool that's actually communicated that they are free for students. So that is really, really nice to see. I really like it when tools support people that are still studying and might not have the means to pay for these kinds of tools. Once your trial's expired, it's only $99, a one-time purchase for this tool. Now, I am surprised to see this because I think we've seen other design tools in the past like Sketch kind of get burnt by this one-time purchase fee. So curious to see if that's actually going to be good for their long-term strategy or not. But for now, I see $99 one time. I'm like, sure, I'm happy to pay that. Now, Drama kind of reminds me a little bit of Atomic IO back in the day where you can add micro interactions and transitions and you can create and edit animations on a timeline. So it's really, really nice and visual. They have playback and you can also add layer events. So it's not just page, like static page transitions. Always sad to see when there is no support for Android. Right now, they only support mirroring on an iOS device, so if you're on Android, I guess you're out of luck. However, they do have built-in screen recording, so that's a nice way to kind of get around it if you wanted to create videos or GIFs of your prototype in action, which is really helpful for presentations. They have the screen recording built-in, which is great. No need to open QuickTime. It looks like I can import from Sketch, but not yet any support for Figma. However, I can directly design within the tool itself, so I don't necessarily need to import unless maybe I had something existing that I wanted to bring in and prototype. The design part of the tool doesn't seem that robust. It is a desktop tool, so there is no collaboration. So I'm already thinking that as a team, this might not be a great tool for us. This also kind of explains maybe the one-time $99 purchase fee. Maybe they're going more for like the, the freelancer or the independent designer. In summary, I think this is a good prototyping tool for students to get their hands dirty and give prototyping a go. If you've never prototyped before, a tool like this, which seems very lightweight and very easy, you can import or get started straight in the tool, seems like a nice place to begin your prototyping development. And that's it. That's all the design tools I recommend watching out for in 2020. Thank you so much, friend, for watching. If there's tools I missed that you're really excited about, then please leave them in the comments below so that I and other people watching can check them out. Thanks for watching another video. Bye bye.